Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now this week Rus Russian President Vladimir Putin has announced the extension of the embargo on all food and agricultural rated imports from Western countries that was first introduced in 2014. The ban will now continue until the end of 2026. Now, over the 10 years of its existence, these restrictions have not only enabled Russia's agro-industrial complex to become self-sufficient and establish food security, but it's also become a major export-oriented industry. It's also allowed the country to navigate the unprecedented sanctions introduced by the West in 2022 with relative ease. So what was the impact of Russia's food embargo on its economy and the well-being of its people? Well, the embargo was introduced on the 6th of August uh, uh, 2014 by a presidential decree banning all agricultural products from countries that imposed economic sanctions on Russia in response to the reunification of the Crimea with Russia. Now, the initial stage of the embargo targeted food products from the EU, the USA, Australia, Canada, Norway, and later Iceland, Liechtenstein, Albania and Montenegro, not that they produce that much, and Ukraine was added to the list. Now, the import ban applied to a wide range of products, including beef, pork, poultry, fish, seafood, cheese, milk, fruits, vegetables and other items and on the government list. Now, the full list is subject to regular review, but I don't, as far as I know, nothing has actually ever been excluded from the list once it's been on it. Now, it's worth noting that the Russian market was worth around 30 billion euros a year to the European food producers. Now, that market's lost and it's never going to come back. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all just for watching because I do appreciate every single viewer. Now, there's a consensus among analysts that the food embargo was a key factor in the development of Russia's domestic agro-industrial complex. Now, thanks to generous incentives offered by the Russian government to producers, the import substitution program was initiated. Although initially after the ban, there was a shortage of certain foods like French and Italian cheeses, Danish pork, Hungarian salami, other countries stepped in and we managed to get products that were replaced by the, what was missing from the Europeans. I mean, between 2014 and 2023, the overall growth in agricultural production in Russia grew by over 30%, was particularly notable in food products of 43%. Now, the volumes of grain, crops, fruit, vegetables, livestock, poultry, meat and dairy products have all gone up dramatically. I mean, even the cheese making industry saw a significant growth in consumer demand for product production and local production doubled to over 800,000 tonnes of cheese. And believe it or not, the quality is rather good because mainly because some Italians and French decided to set up in Russia and use their skills to make native cheeses um, from France in Russia. Now, a number of the foreign varieties like Parmesan and Camembert that were almost import, entirely imported are now being produced domestically for the first time by these Italian, French and uh, <coughs> expats. Now, since 2020, the exports of Russian agricultural products have vastly exceeded imports. And that's indicated the shift towards the export oriented agricultural development model. I mean, in 2023, Russia's agricultural exports reached 43.5 billion, which is up 2.5 times compared to 2013. And it's supplied to 160 countries around the world, although it's mainly grains, oils, uh, wheats and meats. I mean, foodstuffs related imports decreased to 15.2 billion, and that's bananas, citrus fruits, coffees, teas and other types of foods that aren't grown and produced in Russia. Now, it's believed that the current state of affairs in agriculture has created the basis for achieving the goals set out in the government plan for 2030, which is a 25% increase in food production and a 50% increase in exports. 
Now, in 2022, the sanctions pressure on Russia increased, but the agro-industrial sector was no longer susceptible to that embargo. Fortunately, because of Russia's introduction in, uh, of sanctions in 2014, they know how to worry about if anything was going to come from the West, and that, but that could have been a dangerous level of, of pressure. But because Russia's already achieved food self-sufficiency and sovereignty, the process of import substitution had been a huge success. I mean, from 2014 to 2023, the food sector uh, expanded so much that um, it's now able to feed the people and export. I mean, I mean, Russia's agricultural exports have grown by 2.6 times, as I said, to $43.5 billion, compared to 17.1 in 2013. It's also worth noting that you know, fact, food security is a key priority. So the government's provided substantial support to certain agricultural sectors in forms of preferential loans, subsidies and benefits. And that was with the objective of raising agricultural production to a new level and making sure that self-sufficiency in food production. And it's worked. I mean, even in things like tomatoes and cucumbers, we now have them all the year round and none of them are imported. Now, the production of livestock and poetry is up hugely. Russia used to introduce chicken uh, from around the world, and now Russia's fourth place in meat production from uh, in the world. I mean, meat production has gone from a major importer to a major now exporter, sending pigs to China. It's worth noting that all the new market p p positions that were made by uh, imports being cancelled have now been taken up by uh, domestic producers. I mean, what's the benefits of what's happened is the indirect stimulation of other sectors of the economy in agriculture. You've now got an increased demand for domestic products, which has resulted in a growth across a wide number of sectors from mechanical engineering, the production of specialised equipment, biotechnology, genetics, veterinary drugs and construction. Plus the expansion of employment opportunities in factories, etc., because the demand for the industry have led to a resurgence in agricultural research, food processing and education. Now, Russia has also began to actively develop the processing of its agricultural products. I mean, it's been increasing its flour and flour-based production for years, and it's recently expanded its product range to include more deeply processed items, which is a wide range of pastas, breads, biscuits and cakes, and a number of its players in the agro-industrial sector have become large international businesses with a calculated return on their investment and serious development projects. Now, they have attracted substantial investments for, from those who previously considered agriculture too risky to invest in. Now, extending the embargo uh, until 2026 will convey a protectionist message to the market uh, participants and allow them greater protection to cover their uh, investment. I mean, the reduction of imports of Western products has also proved beneficial for the Russian economy, as it has the reorientation towards the East with the new foreign, foreign policy. Priorities. Now, Russia is a major exporter of agriculture and food products and has built new relationships with countries like China, India and other members of the Global South and the BRICS. And it's increasing their trade volumes by supplying them with quality foods, non-GMO and food products and uh, fertilizers. I mean, in agriculture, uh, Russian producers now have a profitability rate of 18.9%. And that's much higher than the average profit margin across other sectors of the economy. I mean, agricultural uh, sector uh, in Russia is around 70 billion a year, which is an increase of about 10%. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture re anticipates that Russia will have another record harvest uh, in 2024. It'll be certainly in the top five, but it'll be lower than the record in 2023 due to the fact it was a wet spring and that destroyed around 1 million hectares of crops. 
But Russian agriculture also benefits from Russia being a world leader in fertilizer production. Although it has faced problems in 2022, it's some snags due to export logistics um, challenges. However, the producers have already adapted to the new conditions and uh, Russian volume of fertilizers has reached a new record level. I mean, forecasts sustained uh, in production, particularly in nitrogen fertilizer, Russia will continue to be the global leader, driven by its historical share, which is driven, of course, by its product quality and its low production costs, which means its low cost to the actual consumer. Plus, there's been a shift in sales focus towards Africa and Asia, and exports to which countries have uh, difficulties are, are still at a high level as high energy costs make Russian fertilizers very cost competitive in places like Europe. You know, they can't afford the gas, so they have to buy the fertilizer for some, from somewhere else. Now, there's considerable growth still for import substitution in raw materials, seeds, and the means of production. So. As you have it, the embargo has enabled Russia to redirect the flow of its products to alternative friendly markets, and that's been one of the major success stories of Russia over the past 10 years. So the EU's ban on Russia and Russia's ban on the EU has benefited Russia more than it has the EU. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobrexit.com by clicking on the thanks button and making a small donation. Don't forget to uh, comment. I love getting your comments. I love responding to your comments and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.